So presumably by now you have some tools developed and you've practiced a little bit and kind of figured out uh, how to go between different patterns for any given follow with a little bit of ease and you feel comfortable now with the tools that you've developed over time. Uh, this is going to be a discussion on how you now really apply those things for each specific discipline. Now, uh, you have one very important thing is that you have to become familiar with guitar and the way that it's played and the way that it's accented and you have to become familiar in regards to guitar with the different common things that happen with guitar. Uh, so for example there might be some uh, rhythmic or melodic structures that uh, you've heard before or heard something like them before and you maybe hear uh, uh, a different take on the same idea but just again familiarizing your, yourself with those basic ideas that you hear uh, in guitar they have what's called falsetas and those falsetas are uh, there's some real standard common ones especially in the more traditional flamenco guitar style and you'll do well to learn those so that you can accompany it accordingly now, same thing applies as it comes to dance. There's some real basic dance steps. There's some real basic letras in cante that follow the same kind of uh, patterns. And once you become familiar with those, it'll be easier to accompany those specific things. But uh, one thing I really want to just focus on in this discussion is um, what do you as a percussionist do in order to boost what's happening. Uh, as I've said in other videos, your main function really is to keep, uh, keep a beat. So you're really kind of gluing everything together along with the palmas and keeping a nice swing going. But for example, you might have a dancer that uh, you're performing with that has some specific breaks and cuts in tricky places in their baile or in their footwork and uh, they'll want you to go ahead and hit those with them. So my approach has been and my experience has been and because I'm a dancer I know what, what I prefer. Uh, you really have to go, you have to traverse the two worlds so you have to keep a backbeat but you also want to give them accents where there's big accents coming. So for example if a guitarist, dancer and Padmas and the singer all stopped on one beat and it was a set part of a dance choreography for example then you'd do exactly the same thing you'd stop in the same place and then you'd pick back up wherever it made sense to pick back up so uh, an example is and I'll do this without getting up but you can just listen and kind of watch what I'm doing with my arms but as a dancer in Bulleria for example a desplante starts 1, 2, 3 in a 12 count rhythm so if I'm going 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and on back down to 12. It starts 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, those movements I just did are reflections of what my feet are doing. And what my feet are doing, you could probably hear on the video, I didn't hit it too hard, but uh, I'm accenting certain parts more than others. So there's definitely reference to accents are already there in a compass. So for example, when I did 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 at the end of the step, in Flamenco Bulleria, we play 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So basically, if you can watch the dancer and just kind of do what they're doing, uh, a lot of times they're doing what's already inherently in the compass anyway. So uh, you don't have to stray too far from what you already have in terms of tools. Um, only thing I do maybe on that on that this front there for example is because they're hitting one, two, three, if I'm playing here and they want to do one, two, three, that's the way I would accompany a, a this front there because they're hitting one, two, three, which I hit here. And then I then I go back into just holding the back beat until they do something that's accented again. In this case, this this step here, you'll see. 
or sometimes they go there's a lot of different things you can do or even more simply that again that's another accent within that particular type of step so I could play one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ah, 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 six, seven, eight, nine, ten. so uh, in that way you're boosting what they're doing which gets gets away from just the standard compass but at the same time you're still giving them something to work against now if I get a guitarist, for example, can get very, very tricky with what they're playing rhythmically. Probably more so than even a singer. And sometimes more so than a, than a dancer. I mean, they get really complex with what they do. Because they have it all right here, I think they can do more in terms of rhythm. Uh, so when they get really complex without some really strong accents, it's to your advantage to just play through what they're doing. Now, if you get with a guitarist and they say, I would like to set this, or I would like a break on this particular part, then go ahead and do that. Um, but for the most part, you're just, you're just keeping, them, keeping them afloat. There's sometimes they're doing things that are so complex that they need those strong downbeats to reference, or they'll get lost themselves, or the music can kind of seem to get lost, even if you both know where you are. So it's a better, better idea to play through a lot of things. When there's big accents, you hit the big accents with them. And uh, as, in terms of cante, let's say it was just you and a singer, and you were just providing, uh, and there was no guitarist, no dancer. Your best bet is to just keep an open rhythm for the most part. Their, their accenting is going to be their, their part of the experience. It's, that's their art, the way they're phrasing and playing with rhythm that's just basically what what their job is for us we're just holding a backbeat again so they have a reference so uh you'll go between uh doing what the dance is doing and just holding basic compas and you'll be doing the same things with guitar and cante uh i'd say just watch a lot of youtube videos get all the experience you can if there's a dance class get in there and play for them Ask the teacher maybe what they would like. Make sure it's a quality teacher. I mean, you can usually tell after a while if this teacher knows what they're doing in terms of music and in terms of structure. But you know, ask them what they what they what they think feels better or sounds better. And uh, never be afraid to ask questions to uh, anybody that that you respect as a flamenco artist. And you'll learn a lot that way. Um, uh, for me as a dancer, I, like I said before, I like to have backbeat. And I like accents. Uh, I would rather do my footwork against uh, a nice little backbeat so I have something to play with. But uh, enjoy yourself at any rate.